Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on installing and troubleshooting adapter cards. I'm James Messer and I'll be your host for this module where we're going to learn everything we need to know for example 220-601. And that exam section 1.3 means we need to understand basic troubleshooting techniques so that we can check for problems with adapter cards. The 220-602 exam, section 1.1, describes how we need to add, remove, and configure these adapter cards. And also in 220-602, section 1.2, says that we need to identify the steps used to troubleshoot adapter cards. So we're going to go through quite a bit in this particular module. There are really four steps you should go through when you're installing an adapter card. You should start by gathering information. You should then start installing the adapter card hardware itself. You should do a driver installation. And finally, we need to do a final check. How would you know if you actually got the adapter card installed exactly right? Let's start with the first step, information gathering. Always go back to the documentation of your computer to determine what type of slots you have available for your adapter cards and how many slots you have available. So you know exactly if you have a PCI card, if it's a 32-bit, a 64-bit, if you have a PCI Express slot, what's in there. You also need to check the documentation for your adapter card itself and make sure it matches with what's available in your computer. So check the minimum hardware requirements. Also check the minimum software requirements. I have purchased adapter cards before for my Windows Vista system and found that it did not have drivers for Windows XP which meant I couldn't use that adapter card. I needed to go back and get a different kind of adapter card for my computer. A good place to go if you're wondering if this card is really going to work well is to go to the online website for the card manufacturer and look in their knowledge base. See if there's any gotchas like that. Now, I have purchased cards before that said this card will work great unless you happen to be using this particular kind of camera or this particular kind of computer. And if you're using this computer, it's not compatible with this card. Well, there you know right off the bat you have a hardware problem. You can also look at the support forums. What's everybody else saying about this card? Is this card working the way you would expect? Are people having a lot of problems with it? Maybe you should look at what other cards are available before you even start the installation process. Finally, you may want to know before you start installing hardware, you may want to check and see if you need to install the software driver before you put the hardware in. And this is kind of different. It depends on what type of card you're working with. Check the documentation, the information gathering. You've bought the card. You brought it home. Read the manual. And it will tell you very quickly, before you install the hardware, put this CD in the drive and load this driver up. Or don't load the driver until you install the hardware. So it just depends on what you're doing. You need to make sure you do it in the right order. So let's talk about installing adapter cards. This is very easy. If you've pulled the top off your computer, there's a ton of slots available. You found the one you wanted. What's good is you can't go wrong, really. When you start looking at your motherboard, there's only a certain set of places where the adapter cards are going to go. Now, I've taken the motherboard out of my system so we can see it a little bit better on my screen. But usually, you're unscrewing a slot. You're making a slot available. And then you're looking at the ports available on your motherboard. What I'd like to do is install an Ethernet card. Now, I have an Ethernet card in my system that is a 64-bit Ethernet card. And so I happen to have on my motherboard a 64-bit slot, a PCI slot for this card. So it fits perfectly in there. You can see that it does fit exactly the way it should. So I know I've got the right slot for this particular card. All we have to do is push it down. Notice that I'm only using the edges of the card. Don't touch any of the components on the card. Only use the edges whenever you're dealing with any equipment. And for this card, leave it in the package. Leave it in the static bag until you're ready to install it. That way you're minimizing the risk of having any type of static discharge that's going to cause a problem with the components that are on this card. So now we push into the motherboard very gently, and it should pop right into that slot. We don't want to push down with a lot of force because you're going to find that the motherboard itself can warp out a little bit. And it's got supports on the bottom, but there shouldn't be a need to really force this in there. If it's not going in, it's another reason. These slide into the slot, pop in pretty well. So once we have it in the slot, make sure that you use the screws that are in place to screw on this connection, this metal piece on the very end, so that it stays in place very solid. Now, I've got this card in place, but you'll notice it didn't install exactly right. One thing you want to check for whenever you're installing an adapter card, you should not see any of these copper connections on here, these gold-plated connections. Make sure that that gold color isn't showing up anywhere. This card is sticking out a little bit. 
So give it a push on the end. Make sure everything is seated extremely well because even being up just a little bit out of that can create problems for you when you start to try to install drivers and suddenly your system doesn't see a card there. And simply by taking the top off, pushing down, now suddenly it sees a card in that particular slot. Now that we've got the hardware installed, let's install the driver. Now, one of the first things that we know, if we've checked the documentation and it's told us that we can now install the driver after we've got the hardware installed. We want to make sure we do these things in the right order. So this will also tell you exactly the steps you should go through for your operating system to install the driver. It's different depending on the type of driver that you're using. We'll see this in a moment. You may also want to go to the website and check and make sure you've got the latest version of the driver. Sometimes the driver is updated from the time it ships on the CD-ROM that comes with your adapter card. And going out to the website, you can download what's latest out there. If you have a driver previously installed, you may be asked in the documentation to uninstall the driver. Some driver installation programs will do that for you automatically, but you want to check the documentation and see which way you should do it for yours. Now, there's two ways to install drivers usually. The manufacturer themselves will often provide a setup program that runs automatically to install the drivers. Or you may be asked to install them manually using the steps of the operating system. In Microsoft Windows XP, for instance, you use something called the Windows Device Manager. Let's run through both of those configurations and I'll show you what to expect whenever you start to do an installation like that. Here's my desktop. I have downloaded a new driver for my video card that's in my laptop. And here's the card right here. Here's the driver for the, the adapter card that's inside of my laptop. And this is the new driver. So there's nothing I need to do other than run this program. And if I double click on this program, it will start the application. And it will then tell me what this driver happens to be. So I don't have to go to the Windows Device Manager. I don't have to do anything special for that. Here's an example of a driver that automatically installs itself. What I did was download from the Dell website this r184906.exe program, and I ran it. And what this is is the video driver for my system. I don't have to go to the Windows Device Manager. I don't have to uninstall anything. This is a really nice installation program for a driver. And it even tells you this is for this type of card. Here's the driver version. It's for these systems. It's for these types of languages. Well, that's exactly what I'd like. And if I click Continue, it says, where would you like to put the drivers? That sounds good. Uh, the, that folder doesn't exist already. Would you like to create it? Absolutely. It unzips all of the files. You can see it uncompressing the files. And then what it's going to do is run the program once it finishes unzipping and start the installation progress for the driver. Now, I'm not going to run through this particular full installation, but you can see how easy it is once it starts up. Here's the ATI Catalyst splash screen. And then you click a button and it runs through the installation process. Very, very simple. But they're not always this easy. There's also a manual process we might want to look at for when your driver comes and you have to install it manually through the Windows Device Manager. To show you how you install a driver manually, I've set up a virtual environment for us where we're going to, we're going to install a new SCSI adapter in my virtual machine. I'm using something called Workstation from VMware. And what this will simulate is an actual computer system running Windows XP, but I'm not really going to have a real computer here. It's all happening in software, which is really nice to do. Now, this computer already has a 4 gig hard drive in it. What I'd like to do, instead of having this 4 gig drive only sitting here as an IDE drive, I'd like to add a SCSI drive into this mix. So I'm going to edit my virtual machine settings. I'm going to add. And I'm going to say that when I want to add here is a new hard disk. That's good. And I'm going to create a new hard drive. Hey, we're creating a new hard drive out of nothing. And this is going to be a SCSI drive. So we'll choose SCSI there. And we'll use the default disk file configuration for that. And this SCSI drive, I only want a little one here. So maybe a 0.1 size drive, a 0.1 gig, so 100 mega megabytes. You can see 102 megabytes showed up. So now just like that, we've installed a new hard drive. That was really easy, wasn't it? It's better than pulling the top off a system and messing around with the configuration. Now we need to tell the computer that we're using this drive. But before we do that, we need to start our operating system. So now, sure enough, we've got our new hard drive listed. And let's start this virtual machine and see what happens. Before we start up our virtual machine, I've been given the drivers by the manufacturer to be able to install. And they give it, you, give it to you on a virtual floppy drive. So I'm also going to the, go to the floppy drive on here and tell it to use a floppy drive image. And it's on my hard drive on my desktop. There it is. 
my VM SCSI drive. So now instead of having a real floppy drive, not only did I put in a fake hard drive, I'm now putting in a fake floppy disk. Why not go with a full way if we're going to fake this whole thing out? And now we can start the virtual machine up. When we start it up, one of the things it says is, sure enough, you're starting this up with a SCSI driver. You're going to need to load new drivers in your Windows XP system. Sounds great to me. That's what we're going to do. So we'll start up the system, and it runs through a normal Windows configuration. As this starts up, you can see this is exactly what you would expect to see when starting up any other type of Windows environment. So it's nice to have this virtualized system because then you can start doing changes and you can roll things back very simply. So if you're thinking of doing some things like this, both Microsoft and VM, uh, VMware do have free versions of this available on their websites. Microsoft's is called Virtual PC and VMware's is called the Free VMware Player. They also have a free VMware server. Now our system has started up and what we want to do is install these drivers exactly the way that our documentation says. And it says to do it from the Windows Device Manager. And how you get to that is the Start menu. Under the Settings, you're going to find the Control Panel. And if you're in the classic view of the Control Panel, you're going to see there's an option here for System. If we double click System, there is a tab under the System setting for Hardware. So let's go to our Hardware setting. And sure enough, under our Hardware setting is that Device Manager option. And that brings up our Device Manager screen. This will show you all of the devices you have installed in your system. We're going to choose our disk drive configuration here for our SCSI controller. And there is the driver that is not supposed to work properly in Windows XP. That is the bus logic. That's the one that VM says you definitely want to update that driver. And you do that by right mouse clicking and choosing Update Driver. And all of this is right from the documentation that they sent me. So once I click Update Driver, one of the things that comes up is this little wizard that says, do you want to connect a Windows Update to search for the driver? Well, no, I have the driver. So we don't have to worry about this time. And it says, what do you want the wizard to do? Do you want to install the software automatically? Or would you like to install it from a specific location? Well, I know that I have that virtual floppy drive, so it's going to be a very specific location. And it says, where should we include the search? Should we search on floppy drive and CD-ROM? We could click there, but I want to be very specific in my location for the search. So I'm going to browse out. And in my computer, I'm going to choose my very virtual 3 half inch floppy disk. We'll click OK and then click Next. And what it's going to do is say that it's got this bus logic, and now it's found the new software for the VMware SCSI controller. And it starts installing the drivers. It puts them into the right subdirectory. And then it says it's finished. The VMware SCSI controller is done. And click Finish to close the wizard. And now under our SCSI and RAID controller, the VMware SCSI controller is listed. So now we've updated the driver so they can, so they now, can support now support the new hardware, the new hardware, that, we've hardware that we've installed into this system. Now we've installed this new software and new hardware. We've got the drivers installed. We've got the new disk there. But we need to check if it really worked. Now, one good way to check is to just try the device itself. Did it really work? But of course, it's nice to be able to check to see if our Windows XP configuration really did see this hardware and if the driver did load properly. Because if we're trying to troubleshoot a problem, our end user says, my hard drive's not working properly. We're going to want to know if our driver at least loaded. So one good way is to go back to our device manager and check to see if the driver is operating properly. I'm going to start up our device manager in our Windows desktop again so you can see it. It's in the Start menu under Settings. We're going to go to the Control Panel. And it's under System. There is a tab for Hardware. And there's Device Manager. Boy, you have to go through a lot just to get there. Fortunately, in Windows Vista, they make it a lot easier. But for our test, we're going to need to know how to do this in Windows XP. So what we want to do is check. And there under the SCSI and RAID controllers is the driver that we loaded, the VMware SCSI controller. If we right mouse click on that, one of the options is for Properties. And if we choose Properties, the screen that comes up is going to tell us a lot of information about how this driver is working. So you can see the General tab here says there's the VMware SCSI controller. This driver was made by VMware Incorporated. It's located in PCI slot 2 on our virtual machine here. And here's the important part. The device status says that this device is working properly. So we know that the driver 
is talking to the hardware. It not only sees the hardware that we put in, but it's also communicating properly to it. So if we wanted to look at more details about it, there are other tabs here that will tell you about the driver. It will go into details about the driver and even tell you what resources are there. But if all you want to do is check and make sure your driver loaded properly, this is a great place to go to see any of that happening. In review, we've done a lot with installing our adapter cards. We've known how we should be gathering information prior to installing the card. We've gone through the installation process itself. We've checked to make sure we've installed it properly in that slot, I'm giving you some ideas of what to look for once you get it in there. We've gone through very simple driver configuration, and we've gone through the manual process of installing a driver. And then finally, we've done a check to make sure that the driver itself is communicating properly to the adapter card that we happen to put into our new system. If you'd like to check out more videos that we have online for our CompTIA a certification training program or participate in our online forums or any of the other A-plus resources we have, check out our website at freeaplus.com.